In today's video, we're talking about what to do when you find blood in your urine. So we're gonna to talk to Dr. Mark Scholz, who's a 30 year medical oncologist and find out what the process is. Who do you go to and what those first steps are? So in today's video, Dr. Scholz, we're talking about men who are seeing blood in their urine. And there's a lot of concerns, obviously, when you'd see that and you know, you're going about your normal day-to-day -day business and then all of a sudden that pops up. So my first question is, what would cause blood to go into the urine? Well, there's a list. In medicine, we have something called a differential diagnosis. So doctors are trained to formulate a list in their mind immediately when they hear about, you know, pain in a joint or a headache or um, double vision or blood in the urine. The idea is to make sure you don't uh, overlook something uh, because you never thought of it in the first place. The list of things that can cause blood in the urine include kidney stones, bladder cancers, um, infections, urinary tract infections. When you make that sort of a list, the uh, clear issue is, well, which one's the most serious? And that would be the bladder cancer. Kidney stones and, and infections usually aren't life-threatening and they're often easier to diagnose because it, with kidney stones, you may be, have some flank pain. Uh, with uh, bladder infections, you may have uh, soreness, uh, burning discomfort when you urinate. So. The, uh, and then there's testing that goes on uh, to follow up and figure these things out. The idea that prostate cancer could cause blood in the urine is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a real long shot. Men can get prostatitis. They also get uh, calcified stones in the prostate gland, which can uh, cause some bleeding uh, occasionally. But it's uh, extremely unusual for prostate cancer to present with blood in the urine. If men have been faithful in doing their, their, their PSA screening, uh, I suppose anything's possible if men don't check their PSA. I have an unfortunate story of a man just this week who's coming in, 54 years, four years old, who is uh, coming in with a PSA of 1,100 and unfortunately never was screened with PSA. and. Uh, he does have symptoms, but men who are screened normally and check their PSA every year and their PSA is less than 10, practically never have any kind of symptoms, blood in the urine or any other that could be blamed on prostate cancer. Before I get to my next question, please click that subscribe button. When you do this, it tells the YouTube algorithm that this video was helpful for you and they'll push our videos out to other people who need help. Also, if you would like to donate and join our cause, you can do so at pcri.org forward slash donate. Now back to my conversation with Dr. Schulz. So covering the prostate related issues, you know, you mentioned prostatitis, which is an infection in the prostate, correct? Can BPH ever cause blood in the urine? So BPH and enlarged prostate, prostatitis and inflamed prostate, it could be from infection or it could be autoimmune or um, sometimes we don't even know why uh, prostates get inflamed. This is sort of an ambiguous area that's difficult to diagnose and doctors haven't pursued it in great depth because th these issues don't proceed into something life-threatening or dangerous. They can be inconvenient or uncomfortable, but uh, it's often something, if you ignore it, it gets better with time, and uh, or maybe you take some antibiotics and it gets better, and you move on. It hasn't been a big priority to understand with great precision what the different root causes are. We just know that you know prostates can get inflamed, prostates can get enlarged, uh, prostates can form uh, calcified stones that can cause bleeding. And so these sorts of things are seen. The trick is to work backwards from the really serious stuff and make sure we enjoy, don't just glibly assume, oh, this is from prostatitis, and fail to check for the possibility that maybe there's a, a bladder wall cancer there that's trying to say, hey, I'm here, you need to get rid of me, and you're seeing blood in the urine as a result. The uh, typical process that ensues when people have blood in the urine is they'll be referred to a urologist. Uh, they'll confirm the blood with a urine analysis, uh, maybe check for an infection, and maybe get some scans to make sure there's no kidney stones. And uh, oftentimes they'll want to do a cystoscopy, which is a fiber optic scope that goes up the penis and looks around in the bladder. That used to be an, an unavoidable aspect of the workup for hematuria or blood in the urine. Uh, now there's a urine test called CX bladder that is quite precise for detecting bladder cancer and it's possible that we can sidestep that somewhat unpleasant cystoscopy experience now with the uh, urine testing called CX bladder. So with the process of getting that procedure, you know, is there 
anything that patients need to do beforehand or after in order to make sure that they're prepared for it? Is it a one-day procedure? And do, are they going to get it through the urologist or is it going to be in a hospital setting? Right, so it's an outpatient, usually done in the urology office. Uh, doctors, uh, the urologists do these cystoscopies very frequently. It's kind of the bread and butter of the urologic world. It's natural to say, let's take a look. They're using the scope to look at the inner lining of the urethra, the inner lining of the bladder. And traditionally, it was the only way to be 100% sure that, the, um, that there wasn't a bladder tumor growing on the wall of the bladder somewhere. It's generally well tolerated, but it can be a little unpleasant. And in some cases, there can be complications, just as there is with any type of procedure. The reason I mentioned this CX bladder urine test, which may be a, a back door so people can um, confirm there's no bladder cancer without having to go through a cystoscopy. So with CX bladder, is it widely available and covered by insurance? It certainly is, yeah. Is there any sort of criteria as far as eligibility for a patient to be able to get access to that? There's many types of insurance, but uh, the um, the test is, uh, is a straightforward uh, urine test that is widely available and, and uh, uh, represents a nice alternative to having to undergo a cystoscopy. So for men who are currently experiencing blood in their urine and they're worried about these different, you know, possibilities, what percentages would you say, you know, this is likely to be stones, this is likely to be a UTI versus, you know, something like bladder cancer or irritation with the prostate? Cancers are more common as people get older and older. The uh, patients that uh, don't have uh, symptoms that would represent infection and who have had maybe scans showing that they don't have stones are the individuals where they're going to be at, you're kind of running out of excuses and therefore uh, there's going to be a somewhat higher incidence of finding bladder cancer. But it's not something we're allowed to guess at. We have to really be confident when we uh, are looking for a reason for these things that we make sure that at the very least, that we rule out bladder cancer. From a lot of the comments from our previous video that we did on this, there was a huge sense of urgency. You know, do I need to rush to the ER? Do I have time to make the appointment with the urologist? What do you think about that? Well, it's a matter of degree. Uh, if men are just noting, noticing a little bit of pinkness in the urine periodically, that um, there's, it's no emergency at all. If they have constant bright red blood, one of the issues that comes up is uh, the possibility of that blood clotting in the bladder and then obstructing the outflow of urine through the penis. That becomes a, an urgent emergency that requires going to the emergency room and having a catheter placed so that the urine can drain uh, yeah, out of the bladder. You know, I really feel for these patients because they're seeing blood in their urine. It's incredibly scary, you know, and I've read the comments from our previous video and there's so many people that are experiencing at that moment and watching the video and, you know, wanting to know what that process is as you described. And, you know, going to the emergency room, from my understanding, they're going to bring a urologist in and then they're going to go, you know, do a cystoscopy or they're going to look at CX bladder and see if there really is a bladder cancer. But what if they do find something? What is that process like? And and how, you know, what are the statistics when it comes to bladder cancer? This is a prostate cancer um, specialty channel, and the treatment of bladder cancer has its own expertise. But it is something that comes up in our patients, and we've become familiar with it over the years. The, um, the good news is that bladder cancer, when it's detected early, is highly curable, and it is often manageable with non-surgical approaches where they can... Uh, just uh, peel it off the surface of the bladder. They can instill solutions into the bladder that prevent new bladder cancers from coming along. So the, the outlook is very optimistic if people catch it early. And uh, the most common reason that bladder cancer comes to the attention of people is because of blood in the urine. It will be necessary to check that out in most cases. If you have a 30-year-old man going to the emergency room who's clearly got a urinary tract infection, they're not going to screen that young individual for bladder cancer. But as you look at the age group of patients that I see in the prostate cancer age group, all of those people are at some point going to need some screen to make sure there's not an early bladder cancer present. Seeing blood in your urine can be very intense and it can be cause for concern. But as Dr. Schulz mentioned, there's a huge difference between, you know, kind of faint blood and needing to go make an appointment with a urologist or seeing, you know, more blood in the urine and needing to go to the ER. In both situations, now you know what the outline is. You know that they're going to be checking for stones. You know they're going to be checking for a UTI. And if it is something more serious and they're telling you you need to get a cystoscopy and find out whether or not, you know, you do have bladder cancer, 
answer, it's also good to know about CX Platter and see if that is or is not an option for you. I think it's always important to advocate for yourself and ask a lot of questions. What I would encourage you to do is to bring somebody with you and ask the questions alongside of you. It's just good to not go through this process alone. You know, they can remember things. You can record your doctor's visits and tell them and ask them permission and say, hey, is it possible to record this? Because I just want to remember everything you're saying. A lot of times when we see patients that are in, you know, intense situations, you're in a doctor's appointment, you're getting checked. Sometimes it's easy to forget. So that's always been a helpful tip. And so if you have questions about any of the things that we talked about in this video or you would like more information based off of your personal case you can contact our helpline at pcri.org forward slash helpline these are prostate cancer patients who can give you information not advice but they can also help prepare you for those doctor's appointments and it is very helpful maybe you don't have somebody to go with you and the helpline can definitely get you ready for that appointment and just let you know ahead of time what to expect you know, I would really try to ask your questions, make sure you're getting your answers and getting to a place where you feel mentally comfortable because a lot of anxiety can come from seeing, seeing something like blood in the urine. But as Dr. Schull said, even if there is something more intense like bladder cancer, at least you know that there are really good options and catching it early is important. Early screening in prostate, bladder, or any of the other types of diseases is really important. So please make sure you're getting your annual checkups, you're advocating for your health, and you're taking care of yourself because you're so important. Please remember that you're not alone, and I hope you have a great